can we talk because my tin hat is tingling okay i'm sitting here minding my own business and i'll come across the news and see that a lot of big box stores are closing long behind us are the days where we can walk into big name stores like bed bath and beyond macy's okay and even walmart yeah, you heard me, Walmart. Walmart is closing down a lot of their stores and it got my tin hat tingling because I'm wondering why. I mean, not too long ago, we were rolling back the prices. Like, what's good, Walmart? What's the tea? If your tin hat is tingling like mine, stay tuned to the end of this video because what I reveal at the end just might shock you. But before we get into that, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and turn on that post notification bell so that you can be notified of more content like this. My name is Tandy, now let's get into it. Walmart is closing half of its stores in Chicago because they haven't made any money since the company entered the city almost 17 years ago. In fact, Walmart says they've been losing tens of millions of dollars every year in Chicago and annual losses have doubled in the past five. My jaw dropped. Why didn't they move? It's been 17 years. Why can't the everything store work in the third largest city in the US? Competition from Target, Aldi, Albertsons, which have a much bigger presence. And in general, Walmart hasn't been super successful adopting the big superstore suburban model in urban areas. There's not a single one within the New York City city limits. Now that I think about it, I've never seen a Walmart here. Yeah, that always was something that I thought was interesting. As someone who grew up in New York, like there's really not a Walmart out here, but there's a Target though. I'm just saying. I know for the longest time, like I heard that that was because they were afraid of like thefts and stuff like that. But I mean, if that's the case, like you shouldn't have a store anywhere because theft is happening everywhere. I can't think of another big store, but there's Target in New York. So why isn't there a Walmart? I don't know, it's just weird. But believe it or not, Chicago isn't the only city losing the mega store. Check out this next video. The Walmarts are closing down. That's something you don't hear every day. But the most woke city in America, Portland, Oregon, is closing its last two Walmart locations. Why? Because people keep robbing the place on a daily and nothing's being done about it. Seems to be like a trend between these woke places in America, California, Portland, places like this, they wanna tell the public that it's a crime to physically move homeless people's property from point A to point B. In other words, relocating them is a crime. So that leaves places like Skid Row to sit there and flourish. And what's gonna happen? Homeless people or degenerates or drug addicts, they're gonna rob stores. And you've seen a lot of it on social media. I've seen so many videos of people just like robbing places in the middle of daylight, in the middle of a shift, not even being sneaky about it. It's actually kind of a catch-22 when you think about it because you're probably stealing because you don't have a lot of money, but then the Walmart closes down because a lot of people are stealing. But Portland ended up defunding the police back in 2020. This is a clear sign of like what happens when you do that. Maybe train them a little better. The whole thing is kind of bananas in my opinion. People like this will continue behavior like that, thinking that there's nothing that will happen because of it and now those same people aren't going to be able to grocery shop and it's pissing them off stay woke portlandia later tater wow um a lot of information to digest right there i had no idea or at least i guess i don't recall back in 2020 portland defunding the police i know that was definitely a thing wow interesting that now a big conglomerate like walmart is pulling out of big city like portland due to high crime and theft i think that that's a very interesting correlation that that creator presented but is portland really the most woke city i was just kind of beside the point but like, are they really the most woke city? Only thing I know about Portland is that it has the highest per capita of strip clubs. Did y'all know that? I found that out a couple years ago. They have the most strip clubs. They even have vegan strip clubs. I'm pretty sure. If you're from Portland and you run across this video, leave a comment down below if that's cap or not. All in all though, I can definitely agree as somebody who works in retail, the theft is way out of hand right now. I mean, I'm just thinking about last holiday season. Y'all, when I tell you that people were stealing like literally just walking into the stores taking everything off the shelves into their bags whatever they brought with them and then just walking out 
walking out the same way that they came and nobody stopped them. It is crazy. But at the same time, like again, as somebody who works in retail, I'm not stopping nobody. First of all, you don't know what somebody got on them, okay? I'm not about to get myself shot or stabbed or whatever for a couple dollars an hour. Ain't no way. I'll never forget one time somebody was trying to steal and one of my coworkers at the time decided that she was gonna try to stop them. First of all, ma'am, no, absolutely not. And you know what? She effed around and she found out because that person literally pulled out some pepper spray and pepper sprayed her and walked on out the store about their day. I don't know if they ever got caught, but was it worth it? If you ask me, that wouldn't have been worth me getting pepper sprayed over. Ain't no way. Ain't no way, okay? <laughs> Leave a comment down below if you've ever seen somebody stealing or were you the person that was stealing? I mean, this is a safe space. You can spill the tea. It's just crazy to me that such a big company like Walmart wouldn't have like police presence and stuff though. You have the budget to do that. I would assume anyway. I don't know. Regardless, not only are Walmarts shutting down, but other big brands are shutting down too. A bunch of more negative news coming out of retail. Bed Bath & Beyond is closing 62 stores, holding liquidation sales. Party City, there's talks that that might also be going through bankruptcy. Lululemon announced yesterday, although it's still very profitable and sales are growing, they're going to have margin hit because of inventory. You know, retail had an incredible year last year mm -hmm. and an incredible year the year before. What were the missteps? I know some of it's debt, some of it's over inventory, and some of it's just their businesses didn't kind of farewell. You could do any Google search. Consumer debt has skyrocketed. Yeah. It's at like peak levels. We're moving into a slower economy. How slow? No one knows what it's going to be like. What does that mean? People should have less money in their pockets. Yeah. 11 trillion disappeared from the stock market. That's your retirement accounts, everyone's pensions and 401ks, and then whatever personal stocks you own. At some point, retail has to give. I mean, I would agree with that. A lot of people, and again, I'm speaking from experience, just seeing how retail, like the trend of retail has been just in the last six to eight months. It's been very, very slow. Like at this time, even just last year, we were definitely seeing a lot more people People coming into the doors and buying stuff. I personally work in the beauty department, if you can tell. <laughs> and a lot of people were spending more money. Even just over the holidays, I noticed that, yeah, holidays, you know, were pretty busy, but it definitely wasn't like the holidays of the past that I've worked. And that's kind of scary because when you think about it, people's jobs, people's livelihoods can be affected. These jobs are how people feed their families and, you know, provide roofs over their heads. So it's kind of scary in a way. But especially when you think about how these same consumers and workers everybody has to be able to provide their necessities so if consumer debt is increasing because they're not able to work i don't know it's something to think about for sure i feel like many of these stores though aren't helping themselves because a lot of them are pushing their consumers to get even more in debt by opening credit cards like how many times have you gone into a store find what you need get to check out and then they're like oh would you like to open a uh, such and such Card? No, I wouldn't. I shouldn't even be spending the money on this right now, right? Comment down below. Let me know if you feel that. Like, has that ever happened to you? I'm quite sure it has. And we all have a story about that. Actually, speaking of store credit cards, I actually ran across this really funny video on TikTok. So I want you guys to check this out. Okay, your total is $132. Great. But if you sign up for our Super Friend Superstore credit card, you save 10% on today's purchase. 10%? 10%. So all I need to do is open a low benefit, high interest credit card and I save... $13? Yup, that's amazing! But wait, there's more! There's more? Once you sign up and get your 10% off, there's literally no use for it ever again! Still sounds worth it! Definitely worth it! So how do I get it? It's already done! Your credit score just dropped 50 points! Thank you so much! Was that not the funniest thing? Like, oh my gosh, hashtag relatable, okay? Actually, speaking of Walmart, I recently went to Walmart and I was told that I couldn't use Apple Pay. They were like, oh no, you have to download the app in order to use Apple Pay or you have to have some kind of like Walmart card, I think. Don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure they were like, you either have to have a Walmart card or uh, you have to download the app in order to use Apple Pay. What are you talking about? That was when I knew that something was up. Like something just wasn't clean in the buttermilk, okay? But all jokes aside, like to go back to that video we just watched about the credit cards, that creator was speaking facts. 
Now, I'm not sure if Walmart, like I said, don't quote me. So I'm not sure if Walmart specifically has their own credit card. I think they do, but I'm not sure. It is clear, however, that they are struggling to meet their consumer needs. And believe it or not, that problem for them is not just here in America. It's in other countries too. Hitting the US retail market, there's one clear winner, Walmart. The company brought in more than $500 billion in revenue in 2018, with Americans accounting for more than three quarters of those sales. And a study found that in 2016, nearly every US consumer shopped at a Walmart at some point that year, including online sales. But even though Walmart has comfortably held its number one spot in the US for years, in Japan, well, not so much. Walmart made headlines in July of 2018 when media outlet Nikkei Asian Review reported that the company was looking to sell its Japanese subsidiary, Seiyu. Walmart first got its start in Japan in 2002 when it purchased a minority stake of Seiyu. Walmart invested more than a billion dollars in Japanese operations before the company made Seiyu a fully owned subsidiary in 2008. But Seiyu was struggling even before Walmart took total control. In 2007, Seiyu saw a net loss of about $195 million. Now fast forward to today. Walmart doesn't report its international businesses' individual earnings or losses in the company's annual report. But we do know that there are less Seiyu units in 2018 than there were when Walmart first took full control. Walmart has closed more than 100 Seiyu units since 2014. So why is Seiyu struggling to capture the Japanese market? Some analysts tell us it's because Walmart failed to grasp the preferences of the Japanese consumer. But there is one international food retailer still rearing its head in Japan, and that's American wholesaler Costco. Though Costco only has 26 units in Japan, the company has managed to capture the Japanese market since it entered in 1999. Wow, so shout out to Costco for doing what needs to be done over in Japan, I guess. Doing whatever Walmart could not do, apparently. I think it's interesting how Walmart doesn't report their sales. I'm pretty sure that's what she said in this video. They don't report their sales or their um, their profits, so to speak. I don't know, that seems kind of a little shady to me. What y'all think? Comment down below. Bottom line, Walmart is struggling, okay? And if you are somebody who loves Walmart, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about about Walmart at a big age, okay? Cause Walmart's been around for a minute, all right? What do you feel is the solution to Walmart sustaining as a company? Or do you feel like there's not a solution at all? Just down with the big corporation. Do you think the end of Walmart is near? I'd love to know your thoughts on this topic. So leave a comment down below. If you made it all the way to the end, you the real MVP, okay? Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and make sure that you are subscribed to my channel if you have not already. And turn on that post notification bell so that you can be notified of my future videos. I hope to see you soon. Probably not at Walmart though. <laughs> Bye.